Okay, now uh, we're going to set up the network interface uh, on our, our SUS installation. So, if we look at our help sheet, basically, um, what we see, we've just completed this these steps. Ignore steps 27 to 30 in that uh, in the text. And with the network interface piece, we want to start working at, uh, at steps 31 to 33. And we need to go back to the network settings within Control Center to do that. Okay, step 34, we'll talk about looking at the firewall. And step 35 is changing network settings. So it's kind of going, bouncing back and forth a little bit. Steps 36 to 40 is entering IP addresses. I'll just go ahead and go through all of those uh, steps fairly, fairly quickly. So, so let's minimize this. Okay, um, in step uh, 31, talks about uh, entering the host name and domain name within uh, within your network settings. So what you can do is go, or what they ask you to do is go back to the control center and go to network settings. We'll enter the password. And this had been a little bit unresponsive earlier, and so it looks like it's doing okay now. So those 30 steps, 31 through 33, talk about um, changing the host name information. The host name is the name of that server, of, of your server. So I'm going to say actually um, Sean Server. And that'll be absolutely fine. You can name this whatever you want. The text wants you to, go, to call it uh, DA1. I, I see no reason to do that. Now the domain, the text also wants you to call this digitalairlines.com. I'm just going to call this Sean.com. As long as you keep in mind what your host name is, what your domain is, everything will be perfect. So it's absolutely no problem. It also wants you to click off the change host name via DHCP. By default, this installation of, of Linux should have that disabled to begin with. Now our name server is actually our DNS or our, our gateway. So that's what a name server in the Linux world is, is that DNS. Ours on campus is 10.48.7.254. So that's the IP address of that particular um, of that particular name server. When you work on this at home and you want to have internet access, you may have to change, you will have to change that name server. So you'll get used to going um, accessing this network settings uh, dialog box uh, pretty often. So you might you might get used to that and and use it pretty often. Okay, we'll okay this. The host name and DNS is set up. Host name, Sean Server, that's just fine. No spaces. Remember, no spaces. Uh, domain name, Sean.com, and then name server 10487254. On your client, when you set it up, the box that you're currently setting up will be its name server. Okay, we'll okay that, and it'll write those configuration files and restart the service automatically. When you use a GUI, it'll restart the service automatically. If you edit the configuration files using a text editor, you need to restart the or restart the service um, manually. The next uh, step, 34, asks us to go check on the uh, firewall. So by default, the firewall Let's go to. I just wanted to bring up this screen. Let me something that's more helpful. You'll go to Yes Control Center to actually get to this. If you go to Computer and select Yast, and again Yast is sort of that uh, control panel of the Linux world. If you scroll to Security and Users and select Firewall. I'm going to close this just be, or minimize this because of uh, time constraints, and then open Yast too. This is what that's going to look like. Now, this particular text wants us to disable the firewall. It should be disabled by default, okay? And uh, just and we're doing that because the firewall just may when we're trying to connect from one device to another or do different kinds of things. Um, that firewall may limit limit us, and it's just a hard. It would just be difficult to try to find the problems. If you just disable the firewall initially, then that'll bypass many of those those little problems that'll be really time consuming. So we'll just go to next, 
and finish. Okay, the next piece of this is asking you to put in IP addresses. And that starts at step 35. So we'll go back to um, the control center. We're at the control center. Go back to network settings. And why the text asks you to, to go into network settings, go to the firewall, back to network settings, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, it's just Thursday, I guess. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and close some of these other things. There's an error. That's, that's okay. I'm just um, running through this and closing and cleaning up some stuff. So again, network settings. Come on, there we go. You'll see it's it's fairly responsive, but it might have a little hiccup every now and again. So and I'm and I'm doing a lot of different things. I've got some video stuff open and a number of other things. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this till I get that network setting box up again. Okay. There we go, now we get the authentication. That's what was actually taking the time was to go out and authenticate. And then uh, we will twiddle our thumbs again. Okay, and pause. Okay, we should be running here again. We're back in this network settings area. We're looking at global options, overview, host name, DNS. We've already fixed that and then routing. So under overview, it's wanting us to go ahead and put in an IP address. What we need to do is uh, go down and edit this particular setting. Now we want to, for Ethernet 0 or Ethernet, and Ethernet 0 is that first Ethernet card, is uh, st statically assign an IP address. It's really important to statically assign that on a server because if you're hitting a certain website, you need a set IP address. We're going to use our 10 space ad addresses. So we want to enter 10, let's see, and I use 240, okay, for this server, 10.48.7.240. You're going to use the IP address assigned to you in that, that list. The subnet mask is going to be all the same, 255.255.252.0. Now remember, that's a slash 22 um, subnet mask. The host name is, what did I call this? Sean Server. I hope I remembered that right. Okay, and then we want to just go ahead and next with that, we don't want to add a second network interface card yet. So on this overview, it should say, or it does say, Ethernet card 10487240, and then our host name says Sean-Server, I think I got that right, and Sean.com. Our name server is pointed here. Now on routing, we have to go ahead and put in our default gateway. That's our name server as well, 10.48.7.254. Now, this number is going to stay the same on all of our lab machines. Um, this number will be the same. Um, actually, let me clarify that. This number is going to be the same on all of our servers. This number will change, though, to the IP address of your server for your client. The same is true under name server one, under overview and network interface card. The subnet mask will always be the same. The host name will be the, the name of your computer. You'll statically assign IP addresses and this will be the address of your server. And when I get to a client, I'll probably put in dot, dot 241. Okay, so, so I should be able to go ahead and go to next and OK that. It should write the configuration. Now, let's verify that the IP address has worked correctly. That's saved there. I'm going to go out to, if I can find it here again, uh, more applications. We want to go out to the uh, terminal. And it's probably within here. OK. That's the control center. I can't find it there. Can you find it there? The terminal is loading. So let me pause it and it'll load just as soon as I pause it. Okay, that uh, I accidentally hit the uh, closing button for my video rather than just pausing it. What I want to do at this point, we've gone out and we have um, and just entered 
the network addresses for this server, 1048.7.240. Uh, we've called it uh, Sean-Server, that's the host name. The domain is uh, Sean.com. We put the, the uh, name server in at 1048.7.254, and we added that to, as the gateway as well. So we've done those things. Now, now we want to go to the terminal, uh, the, the, the GNOME terminal, where we can go ahead and enter command line uh, commands. Now, to get there, you can just go to computer, and then I know I've loaded it already, though it's a recent application, but you will find it in uh, more applications. You'll find GNOME terminal in more applications. And then, um, as soon as it loads here, you'll just go ahead and uh, be able to find it, use it, and then it'll be added to your, um, once again, your recent applications. So as that's working, I'm just going to go ahead and I've loaded a GNOME terminal. Now, we can ping. Remember what ping is. Ping is simply um, testing your IP, the TCP IP configuration. It, does, your, does your network interface card work with TCP IP? Uh, is the, are the addresses entered correctly? And then to the next point, we don't have a next hop, but then you can go ahead and ping boxes that are next hop or, or away from you and be able to determine whether you have IP connectivity from one box to another. All we're going to do in this case is see if the, I, if the IP addresses I've entered are working correctly, if, if the IP stack within, uh, within this server is working correctly. So, so a couple of things. We want to enter a command called ifconfig. Now, if is the Linux, ifconfig is the Linux version of ipconfig that you see in the PC version. So with ifconfig, oh, and we have to have to add. Do you see that um, sbin slash ifconfig? We need to add that to the path. We could add that to the to the path. Um, but we can add this to the path within the configuration files. It's not set up automatically. Uh, I have config. Okay, so what we see is the hardware address. We see the IP address. That's the INET address. And that is that um, INET address. We see the subnet mask or the broadcast address. We see the subnet mask. Uh, we see all the stuff that we need to make it appear as if TCP IP was set up correctly. But now let's go out and ping, first of all, our loopback address, 127.0.0.1. Okay, so it says 64 bytes from 127.0.0.1. So it does work. Now, remember with ping in the, in the uh, Windows world, it'll only reply four times. In Linux, it'll continue and continue and continue until you stop it. So you can use Control C to actually stop that. Our loopback address works. Now let's go ahead and ping 48.7.240. Okay, 64 bytes received from 240. Great, great. Now, in the lab, now this isn't going to work because I'm not in the lab. You're going to also want to ping. 1048.7.254 just to test network connect connectivity outside. Here it's going to fail uh, since I'm working at home. But that's what you're going to want to do is test that, con that connectivity. So I think with that we know now that, and we can go ahead and minimize this, that probably is the best thing to do. We know that uh, how to set up the interface card, network interface card, um, how to check the firewall, and how to test connectivity of the network interface card. So I think that will conclude this section.